This is Pocket Watching with JT, the call-in financial talk show focused on helping you get your money right. Jason Thornton is a certified financial planner licensed in both tax and investments. Now, this is not personal financial advice. This is JT's real reaction to all your money and business questions. Are you deep in debt, living paycheck to paycheck and looking for a way out? Call Pocket Watching with JT, the financial advisor for the people. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Now, let's go pocket watching. Hey, Pocket Watchers. Welcome to Pocket Watching with JT. I am certified financial planner, Jason Thornton. I am a real financial advisor. I don't just play one on YouTube. I went to school, actually passed very hard exams and licensing exams and got certified to give people financial advice. But on YouTube, on YouTube, I react to your money questions and scammer news. And tonight we have some breaking scammer news. DJ Envy of iHeartRadio and The Breakfast Club, DJ Envy's business partner, Caesar H. Pena has been arrested. All right, so we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. The feds are also alleging that it was a Ponzi scheme. We have been covering this story for months now. Big shout out to Tony the Closure. Big shout out to Eli from what happened to Common Sense. Eli will be coming up here very shortly to share his insight on the news of the day. But hey, I got to give a big shout out to you, the Pocket Watchers. We are over 95,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. I appreciate it. Been doing this for a little over two years and we are over 95,000. Our goal, obviously, is to reach that magic number of 100,000 subscribers. So do me a favor, hit the like button, Share the content. If you have not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? I give you financial tips from a person that's actually licensed to give financial advice. This is a calling show. You can call me with your money problems, and I do the best I can to help you out. But today, we are absolutely on that bullshit. Today, we are talking about scammer news, the real estate Rico, and I'm pretty sure Tony the Closer has that trademark. The real estate Rico story of DJ Envy and Cesar Pena, all right? So, I mean, this is what we're talking about. I want to be clear. We've been doing this story for a while, uh, long before the big news outlets would even touch this story. We've been able to do it, once again, because of Tony and Eli. But for those of you who are unaware of what's going on, here's a quick refresher of what's going on. Going in on DJ Envy, we going in on Caesar Pina, and we gonna be talking about the real estate Rico. We gonna be talking about how they've been stealing millions of dollars, how they got over a hundred million dollars from the community. A hundred million. Whew. Lord have mercy, a hundred million dollars. Oh, the real estate Rico. We're back now with an iTeam exclusive. Less than a week after we broke the story of investors who say they were scammed in a real estate venture promoted by radio host DJ Envy, there is a major development. DJ Envy's longtime business partner has been arrested by federal agents in New Jersey. Cesar Pena has been charged with fraud. Investigative reporter Sarah Wallace has been all over the story. She has the latest from federal court in Newark. <laughs> Cesar Pena arrested by the feds this morning on a charge of wire fraud and brought here to the federal courthouse in Newark. They say this may be just the beginning. He could face additional charges of money laundering. You might know him on Instagram as Flippin' NJ, my friend Cesar Pena. DJ Envy often had his pal Cesar Pena on the radio host's The Breakfast Club show. Started with no money and here I am 
$50 million late in real estate. Promoting their real estate million. partnership. Now, in this federal complaint, the government says Pena engaged in a Ponzi-like scheme involving investors, adding Pena defrauded dozens of victims of millions of dollars. We interviewed many of them. I lost $200,000. $835,000 in total. I lost a total of $64,000. I lost a million dollars. Envy, whose real name is Rashawn Casey, was not charged. But many of the alleged victims say they were influenced by his celebrity. He's advertising this all over the radio and on television. Investors say Pena promised he would rehab and flip distressed properties, many in Patterson, giving a 30% profit within months. Dozens have now filed lawsuits saying they never got any of their investment back. Pena is accused of pocketing $17 million from just four properties. As news broke of his arrest... <laughs> We were interviewing Jeff Robinson, who owns a food truck and car wash in Patterson. My son, it's my world. And these people took advantage. His son, Jeff Jr., tragically died in a car accident six months ago, leaving two children behind. Jeff Jr. had invested $325,000 with Pena in this Pasea property. The dad says Pena then went dark. On that day, I buried my son. I called Caesar. Oh, bro, I'm going to meet you. I have text correspondence with Caesar, text messages. Oh, I'm, I'm running a little behind. He never met me here. But my main concern is getting what you do to those children is not fair. The comfort would be when my grandkids are in position when they have trust accounts with that money that he owes those children. Pena pleaded not guilty. He has to post a $1 million bond and is being released on electronic monitoring. He cannot leave the state of New Jersey. No comment from DJ Envy. An inside source tells us that the iHeartRadio offices were visited by the feds who took out electronic equipment as part of this investigation. From New York, Sarah Wallace, News 4 New York. My attorneys don't want me to speak, but I think there's things that I need to clear up a little bit. I think you should listen to your attorney. Now, Caesar, if he took money, I wasn't privy to it, nor did I even know. But for, for anybody to say I was involved, that's totally not true. Envy has repeatedly promoted Pena's real estate seminars and investment opportunities. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. Flippin' NJ. Even as lawsuits began mounting by investors who claimed they were ripped off by Caesar for hundreds of thousands of dollars. I created Caesar. There was no Caesar. Caesar wouldn't have the lifeline or life that he had without a DJ. EYL is here because of me. Because of me going on their show. Me putting them on the Breakfast Club. And I don't have a problem with saying it to any of their faces because they know. Same thing with you. <laughs> Nobody would know who you are, the way you are right now, if it wasn't for DJ Envy. For putting you on the Breakfast Club. For putting you on the seminars. For making the moves that I made for you. It would be you would not be as big as you are now, and if you don't think that, you are fucking. EYL's beef and Caesar's beef. I don't get involved. I was with EYL last night out here in Kentucky. Do I like their, their business practices and what they do and, and how do I feel? No. So I'm just not a part of it. Will EYL ever be on the breakfast club again? Probably not. But that's because of me. When it comes to all that, that is because of me. DJ and being what I create. All right, there you have it. For those of you who did not know what was going on, that is a pretty good summary. But if you heard that, you should be confused. Because on one hand, we have DJ Envy, who's playing the victim. He's claiming that he's a victim just like everybody else who gave money to his business partner. But at the end of the video, you hear a personal conversation that DJ Envy had with the credit dude, where in the private personal conversation, he's not playing the victim. In the private personal conversation, he's playing the boss. He said that he created Caesar. He created EYL. He said that he didn't like EYL's business practices and you know they're not going to be back on the breakfast club because of him. He's not going to let them back on. So a lot of big words, a lot of tough talk from DJ Envy, you know.
But now, when the fans come in, he's playing victim. But uh, before we go any further, I... I I got to say this, got to give a big shout out. Shouts out to Tony, the closer. If y'all want to support Tony, because this type of work, it, you don't make a lot of money with content like this. Let's be clear. You don't make a lot of money. You actually make a lot of enemies. So if you want to support Tony, the closer, I suggest you go to his website, support with his merch. I like his merch. The uh, real estate Rico, uh, no refunds, no peace. He's got hats and different things like that. If you want to show some support, obviously, go and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Uh, follow him on Instagram. Subscribe to him on Instagram. But you can also go to his website and buy some merch and support. Because honestly, there's a whole lot of headache, not a, a lot of reward for doing work like this. The same thing to, uh, for Eli. But I want to show this before we really... Uh, get down into it and I bring up Eli. I want to show you guys this now. There are some red flags when it comes to investing that the average person may not be aware of. All right. And I say this all the time because it's real. I'm actually a financial advisor. <laughs> There's people online who claim to be giving you financial advice. They claim that they're financial strategists or whatever they want to claim. I actually went to school for this. I'm not talking about one year, two year, three year, four years of undergrad. Then after undergrad, went back to school to graduate from a financial planning program and then become a certified financial planner. There are certain red flags when it comes to being an investor. Now, you can go to investor.gov and see the government's official list of what they think are you know, red flags. And I agree with these red flags. But honestly, I'm going to give you the pocket watchers simplified version of that. Now, I encourage you go to investor.gov, look at it, but I'm going to break it down and make it a little simple. Okay. When someone comes to you to promote an investment, they normally come in two different categories. In general, there's more than two, but for the sake of argument, there's two different ways they can come at you. The investment is either going to be a public investment or a private investment. Now, a public investment is the type of investment that anyone can get in on. We're talking about things like the stock market, right? Anyone can get in and at any time you can sell and get out. Now, if someone's coming to you and offering you an opportunity to get in on a public investment, Ask this question, why do I need you? If the investment is public, what the hell do I need you for? I can download an app on my phone. I can uh, sign up for an account with some kind of investment company, Vanguard. There's many different ones. I can just sign up myself and buy it myself. I don't need you. So if someone's coming to you, and they, they want you to invest with them in something that's public, it's a red flag. You don't need them anymore. We're not talking about this. This isn't 1975 and you need some stockbroker to help you buy a stock, right? That's not how it works anymore. You can go on your phone. You can buy it yourself. You can sell whenever you want. So that's normally a red flag if they're pushing it like that. Also, there are penny stocks. Penny stocks are for the most part, failures. Most people lose money on penny stocks. So if they're pitching you a penny stock, once again, eh, big red flag. But those are the public type of investments. A lot of the scams that we are witnessing implode in front of our faces are these private type of investments. A private investment is not like the public one, right? You can't just download an app on your phone and buy in. You have to go through some middleman or go directly through the company. What are the disadvantages of a private investment? Well, here we go. A private investment, most of them fail. That's one. Number two, with a private investment, you most likely will not get reliable information about the deal. With a public company, those companies have to be audited by a CPA firm to verify the numbers in their financial statements. With a private company, 
You're just at the mercy of the guy or girl trying to hustle you. They'll throw some numbers in your face and you'll say, okay, it looks like a good deal. So when it comes down to vetting a private deal, yes, you want to look through the numbers, but you also have to look at the person, right? Because once again, the numbers can be played with when it's a private company, right? So look at the person. Do a background check on the person. Is this someone that you want to do business with? This is the number one thing that you should ask. When it's a private company or a private investment, this person does not have to be vetted the same way an accountant has to be vetted or a financial advisor has to be vetted. If it's a private company, you don't know if this person has bankruptcies on their record. You don't know if they have you know, fraud charges on their record. If they're a convicted felon, you don't know. See, any one of you who are watching right now, you can go to three different sources to see if I have felonies on my record, right? You can go to the IRS, you can go to the SEC, or you can go to the Certified Financial Planner Board. I had a background check, not once, not twice, but three different times, okay, so that I can do what I do. You get someone coming to you for a private investment, you should always ask them, are you a convicted felon? Now, if they're offended by it, it is what it is. They want your money. They shouldn't be offended if you ask them the question, are you a convicted felon? If they are offended, ask them, can I do a background check on you? If they don't want you to do a background check on them, it's a red flag. Why are they so offended? I want you to think about this. Let's say you were looking for a babysitter, okay? Looking for a babysitter. And you have a few candidates who's willing to do the job. If you ask them a question like, are you currently on the sex offenders registry? and they get offended, and they don't want you to search their name on the sex offender registry list, it's probably not the babysitter for you. You probably need to go and find someone else because this one ain't good. Same thing when it comes to trusting your money with someone. If they are offended by you just simply saying, I want to run a background check. I want to see if you have any fraud in your past, any felonies in your past, any bankruptcies. I want to do a background check before I give you my life savings. If they push back, if they say, no, I don't want to do it, that's not the investment for you. Pretty simple, all right? All right, before I bring up my brother, I want to go over one particular thing within this um, charging document. Now, this is coming from the feds, right? This right here. This is the criminal complaint that the feds have on your boy, Caesar Humberto Pena, right? This is it right here. Now, they obviously, they describe his business activities as a Ponzi-like scheme. And they describe DJ Envy as individual one in these documents. He's individual one. But there's a particular deal I want you guys to pay attention to. Within this charging document, there is a deal for this Manchester Avenue property, okay? With the Manchester Avenue property, I want you to see all the red flags that kick up. With this property, he was claiming to many not one, but many different investors that he was, you know, buying this property for $140,000, that he would then sell this property and give the person back a 30% return on their money. Okay, 30% return on their money in the matter of a few months. Now, I want you to pay attention to the issue. The issue is, is that he did not simply collect $200,000 from this one victim, he collected over $5 million, okay? Over $5 million, over $5 million for this one particular property. He then goes and sells the property. He does sell it. 
and he sells it for $550,000. But according to the feds, none of the people who gave him over $5 million got any, any money back from this property. Red flags all over the place. Number one, apparently for some, some people, he already owned the property before he even approached the investor. Well, if you're do doing some sort of real estate deal, you probably should investigate and look into the property before you hand over money, right? You should look into the property. Easy property search, you would have knew, already knew he owns this property already, right? Right there, red flag. Another red flag here is they say in the notes that with this particular property, there were many typographical errors. For those of you who are unfamiliar, those that's simply typos. Had several typos in the contract. Now, I know a lot of y'all say, JT, you're petty. You're trying to find different things to make people feel like they're not as intelligent. As no, no, no. If I'm doing a contract with you and I see several typos, red flag, super red flag. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If he can guarantee a 30% return in a few months, if you annualize a 30% return over three to four months, that's over a hundred percent return for the entire year. If you just if you just stop and think, does this make sense? Why are they coming to me, a virtual nobody, to invest and get a 30% return in a few months when he should be able to go to millionaires, billionaires? Hell, just go to a credit union and get that type of money if the returns were real. All right. All right. Let me bring up my brother, Eli, from What Happened to Common Sense. Once again, one of the main forces behind blowing this story up. Let me bring my brother up, Eli, from What Happened to Common Sense. What's going on, bro? Everything is going absolutely amazing today. I knew that this day was eventually going to come. And what's so funny about it is that I remember back in April when I was on a live on Instagram with Tony and I said, number one, everyone was saying, oh, they spent that money. They blew that money on jets. They blew that money on lifestyle. And I said, no, they still have a majority of this money. And mm -hmm. you know how we know that they still have money because his bond was a million dollars and he posted it within a matter of an hour. Woo. Let me repeat that again, because I know some of you may not understand what I'm saying here. The fact that he was able to post bond so quickly tells you they still have this money somewhere. And this is why it's important for you if you have been a victim of this alleged Ponzi scheme to make sure that you file a suit so that we can begin to start getting access to the books. Because, again, another thing that I said, this is wire fraud. The minute that you take a dollar into your bank account, for investment purposes, because they'll see, even if you're not acting as a fiduciary, right? Even if you don't have the title, you're still acting as one. You may think you're not acting as one, but you are. And you have a duty to actually fulfill what you said your role was in that contract. Even if you're not a licensed professional, even if you're not representing an institution, it's known as the Investors Act. You still, when you take someone's money, and you're out here pre pretending to be an investor, even if it's private, you have to do exactly what you said you're going to do with that money. If you take $100,000 into your account and you go to DoorDash or you go and book flight tickets, that's outside of the operating agreement and that's outside of the contract. That is wire fraud. Now, I want you guys to understand, we're not talking about hearsay anymore. We're talking about the feds. The feds have a 90% percent conviction rate when they come for you they're making sure that they come correct now we've laid out the case easy i mean this is a slam dunk open and shut case but i believe that as they start to dig and see in the complaint if jt has a chance to pull up the complaint there was yep. something that stood out to me if you go to attachment b attachment there's something b. that stood out to me it's on the third page Right at the top. Okay. So I'll wait for JT to pull that up. 
I think I got it. Okay. Right there at the beginning, it says, I am a special agent with the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of New Jersey. I am fully familiar with the facts set forth herein based on my own investigation, my conversations with other law enforcement officials. That's important. That means that other law mm -hmm. enforcement agencies are involved. So when right. I spoke about the drug trafficking aspect, keep in mind, a lot of these things are starting to come together. It says, uh, law enforcement officers, in my review of reports, documents, and other items of evidence, because this complaint is being submitted for a limited purpose, I have not set forth each and every fact that I know concerning this investigation. <laughs> Meaning, what I take from this is they have a whole bunch of other information. Mm -hmm. They're simply going with the most easiest charge that they can hit them with, which is the wire fraud charge. Because again, once once you get those bank records and you see the DoorDash, and you oh, see come on. Tickets, I mean, that, that right there, that is an open and shut case. Right. Then when you look at the fact of a, month, a couple of these properties, the fact that you have multiple individuals on the property, that right there is open and shut because that's not an oopsie. That's not a, oh, hey, you know, I have 3,000 doors and I just made a mistake and sold you the wrong door. No, that is intentional. Another thing that stood out to me was we thought that this just happened around the pandemic, but this has been going on since 2017. Mm. So now when we talk about payola, when we talk about who knew what and when did they know it, I want you to think about this for a second. We have at least about 15 victims that have come onto Tony's platform. You mean to tell me that DJ Envy all this time no one's DM'd him. No <laughs> one's reached out to him and said, hey, Caesar owes me money. This has been going on since 2017, allegedly. The next thing that I want to say, and see, people don't like when I say this because they say, oh, why are you including a million dollars worth of game? And why are you talking about EYL? Understand, many of you would not have known about these individuals. No. Nope. Had it not been for those platforms. So you want me to believe and you want me to take on face value that it's okay for me to promote you. See, this is one of the biggest problems with urban culture. I wouldn't even say black culture because I don't believe that that urban culture represents me as a black man. But what I take away from this, what really bothers me is this idea that it is okay for me to promote any and everything to you. And then when it goes, when it's going great and I'm making money, oh man, you know, we the biggest. But then when something goes wrong, well, allegedly, if something happened, then they need to be held liable. No, the same way you covered these individuals and introduced them should be the same way that you cover the case. Because you've noticed that many of these platforms that have had these people on as guests have not said a word. Bigger pockets, million dollars worth of game, EYL, in regards to now that this is out, this is no more allegedly. Why are you not covering this? Because your financial media. You have business segments, so why would you not cover something in the business field? I think that it's disgusting. I think that it's weak. And I think that at a certain point, you know, you have to start holding people accountable for the things that they promote to you. See, understand, because I saw a few comments, and I want to build on this, JT, because I think this is important. Go ahead. I saw people saying, Eli promoted cryptocurrencies. Let me explain something to you. I have never in my life been paid to promote a cryptocurrency. Anytime I spoke about an investment, I have skin in the game. I have my own money in the game. I am educating you on why I put my money in there. I didn't get gifted the coin. I didn't get paid to promote the coin. So that means that if the coin goes down, guess what? I lose money too. We're not talking about a course here. We're not talking about an investment that went bad. We are talking about fraud. Meaning that in the best case scenario, there was absolutely no way you could have made money because there was really no real estate transactions going on. If you take in five million dollars for a property that you purchased for one hundred and thirty hundred and forty thousand at best, you sell it for half a million dollars. How are you going to pay back all of the investors? There's not enough. It's impossible. See, a scam is engineered for the person who's scamming you to profit at your expense. Right. Meaning you cannot profit. Only the person pitching it to you can profit. That is the difference between a legitimate investment 
in a fraudulent investment. For example, there are stocks. There are analysts. Some analysts are bullish on the stock. Others are not. Depending on how the company performs will depend on how the asset performs. But the analyst isn't getting paid at the expense of you losing money. See, the people who are promoting these investment schemes to you, DJ Envy, because he's saying, partner with us, right. we, that, that means that he has to have some type of interest in you partnering with them. That's where the fraud comes into play. That's where the scam comes into play. We're not talking about an investment that went bad. We are talking about absolute outright fraud. Yeah. yeah. And there's got to be some accountability for the platforms, especially when it comes to the way that they are compensated by these gurus and whatever they want to claim and call themselves. Right, because there's payola through the front door of just saying, "Hey, I'm going to give you fifty thousand dollars to get on your platform." That's one thing, but even if you are taking money through your affiliate link, if they happen to buy your book or buy your course, that means they're profiting based on the fact that they had the ability to come on the platform. Right? They now are making money based on the fact that, hey. They wanted exposure on my platform, so I then paid them money, right? So it's it's it it can get frustrating because most people don't understand that they are being made and turned into victims through people who should or that they claim that they have the best interests of their audience. That's that's one of the things that are the the most frustrating because. Like you said, they want the glory when everything is going good. When things go bad, all of a sudden, they're not around to say, oops, my bad. I introduced you guys to a scammer. I introduced you to someone who took the bag and ran off. There has to be some level of due diligence that the host of these platforms are supposed to be doing, right? I mean, <laughs> when you have someone come onto your platform, most of these clowns, if you just do a Google search on their names, about five minutes, you'll see these guys are convicted criminals. They have no type of uh, professional or education within the field. I mean, all of these things pop up and we say, well, you know, give them a shot. Give them a chance. This is what happens when you give a convicted criminal, someone who went to jail based on fraud, a chance. Also, too, this is very important. I'm glad you spoke about the Google search. Let's take it a step further. When right now, because me and Tony was going back and forth about this. He was debating about this because he, he was basically saying that I would never get any guests on my show because before you come on my show, you would have to show me some type of a pr some proof that you right. are actually doing the things that you said that you're doing. So, for example, if a person says that they own 3,000 doors, I want you to understand just like that. That's when you, when you think about the scale of business, 3000 doors truly is the, the type of how large of a scale of an operation that is. We're right. talking about that's, that has to at least be, you know, uh, at least a $20 million operation. So oh, easily, yeah, e yeah, easily a 20, 30 million. So now I should be able to, cause real estate, the transactions are public. So I should be able to go find, all of these properties that your LLCs or companies own. Now, you don't tell me, oh, well, I'm keeping a secret because I don't want the government in my business when you're on my platform bragging that you have 3,000 properties. <laughs> See, you can't you, have you, it both ways. You can't have it both ways. You can't come on here and tell me how successful of a real estate investor you are and you have 3,000 doors, but then not want to show me the 3,000 doors. You know, it, it's like when a person says they can cure cancer or diabetes. Oh. So then, Show me. Don't don't go to some default judgment you won back in the 80s. Show me a patient that went to the white man's doctor, was diagnosed with the disease. They came to you and you cured them. They went back to that doctor and the doctor said they were healed. I mean, it is that simple. It's not mystic. Oh, I know why you can't do that. Because the people, the man, he's going to come after you. Yet you're on the man's platform 
saying you can cure something. It's the same. It, it's like when you think about just how asinine and foolish so much of this is. But see, that's part of the that's part of the stick, right? That's part of the gimmick. Like JT right. said, if it sounds too good to be true, then most likely it's too good to be true. Because at that point, if you have three thousand doors, you're not selling a course. If you have three thousand doors, you're not going to mom and pop investors for two hundred thousand dollars because now you're doing big business and not business, but big business. But see, you can start to see that they're really not doing big business. Yes, that's I, I think we need to emphasize that. And listen, we're, we're going to start taking on callers. There is a link in the chat. If you want to join uh, the show, call in, give us your thoughts on this story hit the link and we'll be taking on callers here in a second. But I just want to emphasize that because that's, that's truly important. I've been blessed to you know represent and work with many high net worth clients. These clients are far too busy to sell and do courses and masterminds and be on, be on zoom links with, with 150 people. It's like, it, that's not what, real wealth does like they might write a book and that's usually way later on in their career they're winding down and they might write a book and to be honest about 80 percent of the stuff that's in those books are either outdated you know because we're talking about uh, uh over a 40 50 60 year career they're writing a book about what they did when they were your age the only real things that you can pull from that are the character things the uh, basic business things that they did, but most likely they made a lot of money being ahead of a trend that now that trend is over and it's mostly everyone knows about it now. And they're just re they're just telling their story to you. That's not what wealth does. But the key point that I want to touch on here, what Eli said, if the man had 3000 doors, just imagine this. Three thousand dollars. He said he was worth like what over fifty million, I believe. He over said he was fifty worth million dollars like, in real estate. He said he had yeah. over fifty million dollars in real estate. Fifty million dollars. He does not need for you to pull out two hundred thousand dollars out of your home. He doesn't need you to get <laughs> to refinance your home and get two hundred thousand dollars to do a project in New Jersey. He and has. You know how I know that? Because guess what? Estate. I'm at that point now. People say, Eli, why don't you go live on YouTube anymore? I don't have the time. <laughs> See, once, once you evolve and you get to a certain level in business, your time is very valuable. So the trade coming and do YouTube lives just isn't worth my time anymore. I don't have the time. I'm too busy doing business. See, so that's how you can tell if a person's really doing the things that they say that they're doing, because at a certain point, you evolve past where you are. All of the red flags should have stood, should have stuck up and stood up to you when you've seen him engaging in the same behavior. It is the same scheme over and over. You go on a breakfast club, you go on EYL, you go on Vlad, you market on Hollywood Unlock. It is this you go on the shade room. It's the same MO over and over again. And like at a certain point, we as a culture, as a community that's really trying to engage in financial literacy. We have to evolve past a lot of this stuff. And I know I keep repeating myself, but that's because truth is consistent. Like many of you are consistently getting scammed with the same foolishness. If it's, if it's masked as hip hop, R&B, rap, entertainer, celebrity, then that tells you that it's not serious because they're not. And, and, and no knock to anyone. I get it. You're trying to bring in a crowd of people that, Never would have invested or never have invested before. I get that. So let the let them fall for that. But some of you are savvy investors, right? And we just got to start looking at certain things. Listen, I want to do business with squares. I don't want to do business with no person that's a semi-rapper or that's trying to trying to mimic rap culture. I'm trying to do business with squares, right? Listen, I'm serious. When I sit down with you, I want to do business with a person that's serious. Listen, you could have had a questionable background, but when you come to me, I'm not doing business with anyone calling themselves a trap landlord. Let, <laughs> just think about that for a second. The brand is trap landlord. See, like, like, like a lot of this stuff, if you just look at it, you'll say it doesn't make any sense. Another thing before we take calls, 
on page three that really stood out to me when I said, okay, something's going on here. If you could pull that up, JT, yeah, this is very, yeah, very important. So it said, Pina, on, if you go to two, it says, Pina and his business partner, key word, business partner, a well-known disc jockey and radio personality, individual one, operated a company that conducted real estate seminars around the country. Together, they used individual one celebrity to promote various real estate enterprises that Pena controlled. Notice that they're calling him individual one, not victim. Because if you scroll throughout, the, <laughs> see, uh, this is very important. Because if you scroll through the document and you go down to uh, at the bottom of page three, it says, starting at least in around 2017, Pena began accepting investments from individual investors, the victims. So they're labeling DJ Envy as an individual, not as a victim. See, this is right. very, very important. And before we take calls, because I know some of you want to come on here and say, well, what did Envy do wrong? And how, how are you conspiring with the person? See, if you play this interview right here, and I want to share my screen real quick because I think mm -hmm. that this is important. For those of you who are still trying to play the, well, yo, how would DJ Envy know? I'm going to prove to you factually, like I did with the Wayback Machine, that not only was DJ Envy involved in these deals, but he was pitching these deals to suspecting in investors. So if we come here and we go to share screen and we go over here to a window. Um, addressing allegations right here. I want you to listen to this. Can you see my screen, JT? No, not yet. But okay, I see it now. Give me one second. Okay. I want you to All listen right, to what he says. Um, there's been a lot going on, Charlemagne. Like what? Don't say like what, man. There's been a, a million and one accusations. <gasps> oh my God, no! <laughs> I'm being serious. So, so let me explain some things. I'm, I'm not, my attorneys don't want me to speak, but I think there's things that I need to clear up a little bit. I think you should listen to your attorney. Why don't I think people like... And Charlemagne's giving him good advice. Because yeah. DJ Envy, the more you speak, if, if you truly didn't have nothing to do with this, you are digging yourself a grave by opening your mouth. Yeah, listen, hey, if your attorney told you don't say nothing, why are you talking? Listen, so Caesar and myself did seminars. Now, the reason I did these seminars is because I wanted to uplift my community. I wanted to teach my community about real estate, things that I didn't know when I was first buying my first home. I wanted to teach our community about investing in generational wealth. So I did these seminars and brought industry professionals to all these seminars, whether it was real estate agents from different markets, contractors, uh, conventional lenders, hard money lenders. I even brought auction.com to actually show people how to purchase houses online. That's what I wanted to do for my people. Now, Caesar. If he took money, I wasn't privy to it, nor did I even know. But I do understand how people feel. So I'm going to prove to you right now that that's a lie. He's saying mm -hmm. if Caesar took money, I wasn't privy to that and I did not know. Now, understand, this video is from about a week ago. But the credit dude who was the individual who initially came on Tony's live and as she spoke about this, he posted a text message thread between him and DJ Envy. And I think that this is important. I'm sharing this right now because I want to show you how DJ Envy is a liar. And if he'll lie about something like this, that's so easily proven, then what else is he lying about? And his words has no credibility. Right here in blue, this is the, cred the credit dude, allegedly, Jose. He goes, mm -hmm. just reminded Caesar again, look at the date, August 9th, 2022. At 359. That is over a year ago. A year ago. He goes, just reminded Caesar again to wire the money and told him to remove my videos and content from Flip to Dow. Busy week this week with the content in our academy and doing QA. I go to Texas on Thursday, two days. This is allegedly DJ Envy. He goes, Yeeks, you going that hard? This is him responding. If he's responding to the credit dues message. That means he's acknowledging that Caesar took the credit dues money. It owes the credit dues money. He then goes, 
And yes, that 150K, I already know I ain't getting back. This is the credit dude letting MV know that he's basically going to just take the loss because Caesar's giving him the runaround to allegedly get his money back. He goes, someone called me the other day telling me how Caesar and Jen are broke and have no money. Also, how they were talking shit about me and Kylie or Keely on the phone. He goes, DJ goes, what up, brother? How you feeling? Not good, but I'm pushing through. That is over a year ago. So when he sits up here and says, I wasn't privy. I didn't know that uh, uh, Caesar was taking money. You knew over a year ago based upon these messages. Right. Now, I want to play in one more video to, mm -hmm. to, to further highlight my point that not only was he pitching to invest with them. See, mm -hmm. the word we, our, us matters. You can't then go, oh, I didn't know. But then <laughs> saying partner with us. Because see, see, I, and, and this is why I say time and time again, some of you niggas really are slow. Because if you are, if you if you can walk and chew gum at the same time, and a person that has a bigger celebrity, a bigger platform, is saying partner with us, you don't think you're just buying into Caesar. You think you're buying into Envy as well. It's just common sense, which is why I named my platform What Happened to Common Sense. Because if you come here and you actually listen to what he says in this video, with me one second, where is it at? Um, boom, 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 boom. To Dow, find it. Here we go. Boom. Share. Okay. Give me one second. If uh, you listen to this, I want you to listen to what he says here. You tell me what is it. What does this sound like to you? Act is disgusting. Not only that, you can partner with us on some deals. Make some money with us. Your partner. And we'll see you July 31st. I'm what up, y'all? It's DJ MV. Flipping NJ. Now. First of all, we want to say thank you so much because if you got this, you either purchased my book, Caesar's book, or you've been to one of our car shows or one of our seminars. And we just want to say thank you. Now, we heard your emails. We've seen your text and your DMs and the comments that you leave. A lot of you just don't have the time, right? You just want to invest. But you want to make sure you can invest in somebody that really knows what they're doing. So if you know me by now, you know I got six kids. You know I DJ everywhere. You know I do car shows. I do a host of everything. And sometimes... I just can't make it out to a property to see. I just can't go to Milwaukee or Detroit or Florida to see a property. But Caesar does this full time. And a lot of times I invest in Caesar. I invest in what he's doing. And now we're actually allowing you to do the same. So welcome to Flip to Dow. Hey, I'll just start developing properties from scratch. Anything that you could think about, it's going to be at your fingertips on this platform. Not only that, we'll have properties up. So let's say there's a property that you're interested in and you want to invest in that property. Now you can invest with us for as little as $100, and that $100 will work for you. Now you can invest nice. with us. Uh, now you can invest with us. See, he's using specific language. And this is what I want to emphasize here. So he is, think about it. If I'm a person... I don't know Caesar Pena, but I know DJ Envy. I know the Breakfast Club's brand. I'm buying into the fact that I think I'm partnering. If I'm partnering with Caesar, then I believe I'm partnering with Envy. So when right. Envy, I was in privy, I didn't know Caesar was taking any money. But then on the next prep saying partner with us, invest with us, how else can you invest but to take somebody's money? I mean, <laughs> JT, is there another way that you can invest without taking someone's money? So how can you say you didn't know Caesar was taking money if you're telling people to invest with us? Isn't that what the whole flip to Dow platform was? It's, it was education and investing. You can own fractional shares in different real estate projects on flip, uh, flip to Dow. That was a... Uh, I don't know, business or investing project that DJ Envy was well aware of, that he was even listed as a part of the, you know, uh, organizational I have, structure. I have that document too. I can post yeah. that. <laughs> if, if Flip the Dollar is supposed to be an organization where people can join in and invest their money, he promoted Flip the Dow and he was even listed as an officer of the organization. I just How can he the then say... I was yeah. unaware that people were giving him money to invest in. 
Come on. Like, like you really want co-founder. us to believe that? Co-founder. <laughs> He's the co-founder. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like I said before. At a certain point, like I, saw, I just saw someone say, nothing you posted proves that Envy took any money. It's not about whether or not he took the money directly. It's the fact that he is promoting this. So now we need to, this is why you get the feds involved. This yep. is why you sue. Because now you want to start to dig deep and find out what did he know and when did he know it? Because now, per the credit dues words, Envy told him not to invest. So now he is steering certain people to the investment, right. but then people that he know, he's saying, hey, don't put your money with Caesar, which means, number one, he lied recently when he said he didn't know that Caesar was taking money. Clearly, he did know because he was telling people, who, he was telling who to invest and, and who, who not, not to. to invest, which means he was orchestrating who can get scammed and who not to get scammed. That is conspiracy, my friends. That is conspiring. Ridiculous. All right, listen, we're going to start taking callers. Let's do our best to stay on topic, right? Let's stay on topic. We are going to Jay Boogie. So Jay Boogie, you'll be live on the air. Then we got Gene. We got Hassan. We got uh, L Malik. All right, so we're going to Jay Boogie. You are live on the air. We're talking about you with JT. What's going on? Mike check. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Oh, Man, it's, it's a lot to unpack here, man. It's my, not my first time. I, I talked talk with you uh, a few times, man, and I like coming up here. You 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 do a lot of hard work on finding out a lot of this stuff, but it, I appreciate I, it. it's, it's so much to unpack. It, I think one of the things, I think this is a huge lesson learned. I think the whole situation is a huge lesson learned. I think we, our people in particular, have to be better about critical thinking and not looking out. I mean, I believe in God, but you know, I would say I call it the Jesus syndrome. Just looking for somebody to save. They want that quick yeah. fix answer. Hey, he got the answer to, to the, my problems. Quick fix. I, we have to get out of that mentality because these platforms have shown that they don't really care. They're gonna put whoever on there, and and whatever happens is whatever happens. It's it's just, and the, I think a lot of people don't even think about it. If he says he. Everything about it just scream red flags. I want to create something that no one else does. I'm going to do a seminar and give it to the people. If you have to pay for the seminar, that's not giving it to the people. If the people who come into the seminar that's teaching class, if they're not getting paid, they're there to make money. Thus and therefore, you're not, they're only trying, they're recruiting. They're just, everyone's recruiting. If you're not paying those people to teach, they're there to make money. So you're paying. If I got to pay for a seminar, I don't care how cheap it is. If I'm paying for a seminar and there's other people there, and obviously my pay should be paying them, if it ain't that many people and they're not making the money they would make not coming to the seminar, doing what they do on a regular day basis, obviously they're there to recruit to make more money. That's just right. common sense. That's how seminars work. That ain't a real yeah. seminar. And, and, not, and not only that, not only that, if you remember what uh, was said on the clip that um, Eli just played, in that clip, he said, if you're here, talking to, to the people who are watching this video, he said, if you're here, that means you either bought my book or you bought Caesar's book or you went to the seminar or you went to the car show. Yes. So to me, the car show <laughs> and the seminars were just a funnel to get people into the investment. Because that's how they got there, based on the video. He said, if you're here, it's because you went to one of the financial seminars are you at the car show? So are you doing it for the people, for the culture? Are you hosting those events as a sales funnel into the investment? Well, it's already off rip because if you came to the car show, you spent money. If you came to the seminar, so basically, hey, since you spent money with me, I got some more money you could spend. <laughs> Here's some <laughs> most stuff. Boy, that's basically what it was. And I, I right, think you're, that's a, you're a qualified. That's what they refer to as a qualified buyer. You've already yeah. been filtered. You're, you're someone who has money. You're someone who's interested in making money. Now that I primed you, here's the sales pitch. But listen, I got to go to the next call. A good call. I appreciate you, Jay Boogie. Thank you so much. But we're going to get through these calls because we're not going to be here all night long. So we got Gene. We got Hassan. We got Malik. 
and then we're gonna get through this thing. So Hassan, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. What's going on, JT? It's your boy House from Jersey, man. What's going on with you, bro? Yes, sir. I'm doing good, man. What do you think about this story? Man, it's crazy, man. Um, at first, I didn't think DJ Envy scammed anybody or actually knew what was going on. But as you follow the case and you hear DJ Envy talk, he knew something. And he also admitted on Tony the Closer's live, I believe, or was probably was another live, that he was paid from Caesar already. Yeah. So he, he absolutely, if y'all go to Tony the Closer's Instagram or his, his YouTube channel, there is that live between uh, DJ Envy and Tony where he said he's done a lot of deals with yes. Caesar. And he said yeah. he made some, some were good, some were bad. Some I got my money real quick and some took a little bit longer. So he he obviously was partnered with them and he made money in some of these deals. But if he made money based on the way that the Fed say the money he got was simply money from new investors. That yes, went to that's the point that I was trying. I was about to try to make. So right there, he's done in because you know what they did with Bernie Madoff and his initial investors. They took the money from the initial investors and had to pay everybody who lost money. Now, mm -hmm. I know you got to get the different callers, so I'm going to try to keep it quick. You know, I'm from Jersey, right? <laughs> I drive Lyft and Patterson, and I also just got into armed security and I work in the Patterson area. Patterson right. is a if Caesar pocketed 17 million dollars, he could have actually went into Patterson and mm -hmm. did something with that 17 million dollars and actually could have had an actual legit real estate fund. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could buy up Patterson for pennies on a dollar, probably. You know what I'm saying? It's really a right. a, a, a dump. So you know, why, you know why he can't do that? Because hold on, hold on, Eli. I want to bring you up because I want because I think you I think you're gonna make the point that I was gonna say. Go ahead, Eli. See, if he was a competent real estate investor, yes, he could have actually went out here and rebuilt Patterson and invested that capital and actually rebuilt Patterson and generated profits and returns for the investors. The problem is he was never ever a good real estate yes. investor. Or developer. See, this goes back to Scam Master J. These people mm -hmm. are perpetrating as if they're good at real estate or if they're as if they're good at business, and they're really not. See, it's all they the facade. And when you, they don't actually practice what they're preaching, and the minute you take them up on the offer and you give them the money, they can't deliver. See, they have all of this knowledge. They can draw on the whiteboard. They know all the celebrities. They look the part. They can tap into the ancestors. They know every historical event that's going on back to yep. Mama Oya. They got the shape <laughs> of the punks. You know what I'm saying? They're they doing it all. Dashiki, they, they, they out here saving babies. They're going down to the border. They're doing it all. And then the minute you give them your money, now that's when all the excuses and the problems happen. And see, this is what I, I've been saying this for the longest. You know, it, and it's, it's the same pattern. The Breakfast Club is extremely problematic it, just for black society as a whole anyway. When it comes I to agree. politics, when it comes to social issues, it, but it's like, they're like controlled opposition, where it's like, why are presidential candidates even going up to the Breakfast Club? They don't mm. know enough to ask the right questions, but they're put there on purpose to pacify you, to keep you dumbfounded. That was an opportunity when you have millions of dollars and you don't do anything with it, but DoorDash, that's like a double negative because you built no wealth you wipe these people out, and all you did was really go support a bunch of quote unquote white businesses because you went and brought mansions, you went and brought Rolls Royces, your wife is now at Drake concerts. None of that money went back into rebuilding the community, revitalizing the community, and building generational wealth. All it did, it went to DoorDash, Chanel, and a bunch of garbage trips to DR. There it is. Any last words, Hassan? 
Yeah, and um, you can't sit here and blame this on the black community because Caesar is Dominican. You know, <laughs> it's just a, <laughs> it's just a bunch of scammers going on in here. But like I said, man, he could have really did something in New Jersey yeah. with that seventeen million dollars, man. And I got my real estate license, so I actually know I'm on the MLS seeing what he could have did with right. that seventeen million dollars. But yeah, man, that's all I got, man. Hey, peace to you, JT, Eli. Tony to close it, man. Y'all keep doing y'all thing, bro. That's what's up, man. Thank you so much for calling. That That's a great point. Yeah, he had the money. He could have done something. But once again, we cannot fall under the illusion that these people actually have the business skills that they claim that they have. Most of the people who pop up in front of you on these podcasts, radio shows, Instagram, whatever, most of these people are simply good marketers. They're good at presenting information. They're good at making content. They're good at a great, like, ooh, that, 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 that he dropped the gym. He said something very impactful. The, that 30 second sound bite, right? A lot of these guys are great at a 30 second sound bite. Let me explain something. I went to business school. You know what they don't teach you in business school? How to give a 30 second sound bite. They teach you a lot on business math. They teach you about contracts. They teach you about investing. They don't teach you how to give a great sound bite. That's a red flag. Someone that is just, just the best public speaker. They have all these skills. You see them talking everywhere. If they're talking everywhere, when the hell do they have time to do actual business? That's also, a problem. Also, JT, what I want to add, because I see some mm -hmm. people saying, oh, Envy's not black or Caesar's not black. Um, understand. What Caesar was doing is no different than what big business has done, right? It's, it's the same MO, right? There, right. there, are, there are black, black, black real estate entrepreneurs who have engaged in the same exact thing that Caesar has done, affinity fraud. My point is, whether he's Hispanic, we can find black people doing the same exact thing. This is millions of dollars that are being extracted out of a wealthless group of people's community that actually could have went towards really developing revitalizing and building generational wealth. So see, we, we, we have to understand that at the end of the day, they're targeting the hip hop urban crowd, right? Yep. The guests, the demographic of people that go on this platform, they know who they're going after, black and Hispanic people. So whether it's big business, whether it's Jay Morrison, whether it was the uh, trading Ponzi scheme that just got exposed down in Atlanta, it's the same M.O., over and over again. It is affinity fraud. Yeah, yeah. When, when people are coming to you and they're trying to get your investment dollars or whatever based on, hey, I'm like you and I'm trying to do good for the community, doing great for the community is one thing, but it first has to make good business sense. If they can't sell you on the business by itself without all of the Hotep B1, hey, 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 this, that, and that, if they can't sell it strictly on the numbers, red flag. All right, we're getting through these calls. We got Gene. Gene, you're live on air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? How you doing, JT? How you guys doing? Um, listen, I just want to bring up this real good point that DJ Energy should pay attention to. Influence is such a powerful thing. You can influence people to do a lot of things. And I'm not trying to compare DJ Envy to a serial killer or anything, but Charles Mason did it. He did one of the worst things, you know what I'm saying? He influenced people right. to take another life, right? So people need to understand when they have the influence, the minds, the ears, the eyes of other human beings, they have to be very careful with what they do with those words and what they ad advise people to do with their money and with their, their train of thinking, right? So I do yeah. think that he needs to, this needs to be a landmark case, honestly, for the Supreme Court and for the feds to just show these influence out influences out here that your influence can land you in jail because at the end of the day they have put people in jail before for their influence and it can happen to any one of you guys that continue trying to scan the black community okay so that's all i wanted to get up um jt thank you so much for your advice i recently bought a home actually actually i was thinking about buying a house in patterson and i was actually thinking about investing in this whole big thing way back in like 2021 but i uh -huh. chose to save my money and decided to just move to brooklyn and purchase my house there and we're signing next mm -hmm. week so shout out to you guys i appreciate you guys, everything you guys do and for covering this shout out to tony the closer man hopefully he, you know he can start doing his business again and you know 
and affecting people the right way. And DJ Envy got 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 what coming for him. And hopefully this shows all the other influencers not to do this shit no more. Excuse my language. But y'all have a good one. Also, right? also what I want to add to that because you said something great about influence. Let me explain something to you, right? This is why the feds getting involved is important because yes. we need to know what DJ Envy's actual involvement was and what did he actually know and when did he know it because if he knowingly was bringing caesar on the platform knowing he did not have three thousand doors but allowing caesar to leverage his platform so that he can get compensated in some way at the expense of investors that is illegal you are conspiring with the person to defraud people See, I, I don't think many of you understand. I don't have to directly take money from you to engage in fraud. I can orchestrate a scheme where he takes the money and gives it to me. That is still fraud, right? <laughs> so although I may not directly be taking the money, if I'm letting him be the face of the operation and letting you wire the money to him, and then he gives me 60% allegedly of what you wired him, I'm still engaging in fraud. So although I may not be directly taking the money for the investment, I am promoting the investment so that you can invest your capital that does not go to real estate that goes into my pocket. See, at a certain point, we just have to be able to say one plus one is motherfucking two. It is not that complicated here, right? <laughs> if I'm orchestrating who to put the money in, the credit dude said, MV said on him on the phone, I told you not to give money to Caesar. That was over a year ago. That means he knew Caesar was taking money. That means he knew Caesar was doing bad business. Yet he continued to allow Caesar to leverage his platform. What don't you get about that? Right. And, and, and let's not forget this part too. DJ Envy cannot claim that he is unaware of the impact of his influence. Because based on what the credit dude also said, that he was approached by first Caesar, and then later, obviously, DJ Envy saying that he wanted to basically buy in to the credit dude's business and own 25% of it. And clearly stated that he is not going to pay the credit dude any money for a 25% equity stake in his business. Mm -hmm. What he was going to trade was not mm -hmm. going to be U.S. federal notes. It wasn't going to be dollars. He was <laughs> going to trade his influence on his platform. He was going to promote him on The Breakfast Club, interview him on The Breakfast Club, have him on his Instagram. So he's valuing that platform, his status as a celebrity influencer by trading and getting equity in people's businesses. And if it happened to the credit dude, how many other people who he promoted on his platform, on iHeartRadio, right? How many other people did he promote and was actually secretly an owner of the business based solely on the fact that he's promoting them? That's also, payola. Too, JT, think about this. He's acknowledging the power of his influence when he says, I created Caesar. I created EYL. I created you to the credit due. He knows yes. that his influence has value because he's saying it to the credit dude over the phone. He understands that if he brings you on, if he brings you on the Breakfast Club, it is going to catapult your career and brand. And what the feds are going to be able to do is look at that and see that are you leveraging your likeness to drive business for them to then get a percentage of their company? That is payola. You're just getting paid in a different way. And this is why, again, it's going to be very important to pull up the records, look at the text messages. Why do you think the think about it? If his hands were clean and he did nothing wrong, why do you think the feds went down to iHeartRadio today, down to the Breakfast Club? Why do you right. think that they took all his electronic devices? Because clearly what he is saying in publicly is not true. Why did iHeart Music remove the video? There and now you got to think about the FT. Yeah, now you got to think about the FTC, and you got to think right. about the FCC because now you're engaging your your promoting products and services that are fraudulent over the airwaves. 
And this is why I said to the victims, this is why you got to press the iHeart Media aspect of it so that you therefore can see what did they know and when did they know it? Yeah. The, the second they start removing videos, every time I see that, they start removing videos, to me, you're admitting some level of guilt. When you start re- taking stuff down, that's a telltale sign. All right, let me get Malik in the building. Uh, Malik, you live on there. What's going on? Yes, uh, you li- uh, can you hear me, JT? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got a. Yeah. What's up? Uh, shout out to e- uh, Eli and uh, peace, Jake. Peace. Y- y- y'all brothers be bringing the eat. I mean, this. I mean, I got a lot of mixed feelings about this. It seems like one big reality show because I can't see our heart being a billion dollar. I think they damn near got a monopoly on on stations, allowing mm-hmm. you know this guy, man, this this Pena guy to come on here and spouse, you know. Uh, these things and, and, he, and he's engaged in fraud, so that's I don't know. I, I, that's that's speculative, and also um, I, I, I'm t- I, I actually believe, man, this is like how they allow how the government seems to uh, be allowing the open fraud over the over the YouTube mm-hmm. uh, freely, and without like like you remember back when George Floyd and they let everybody rob stores and steal. I mean, I was here in Chicago and they literally said you know they all they wanted was no violence but they let everybody just rob and steal all they could steal and like the purge like that purge thing and it seems i mean this is what this shit is really looking like to me man it just it's so ridiculous because what y'all brothers is breaking down it's so apparent and if it's on youtube the government sees it if y'all see it the government see it so it's i don't know what do y'all think man we in the twilight zone or what man now, that, listen, that, that, that's a great question. I'm going to hit it that I want to uh, give Eli an opportunity. I think people forget how limited resources the government has. Now, I know the government has billions and trillions of dollars. I, I know. But in reality, when it comes to law enforcement and when it comes to the enforcement of investment laws and regulations, they have limited resources. Yes. There's, to, in my opinion, if you watch any of my videos, I can show you example after example after example of fraud being perpetrated on social media, people who are getting others into scams, Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes, and teaching people how to commit fraud. I can show that to you once a day on my YouTube channel. The problem is the federal government, agencies like the SEC, They have limited resources. They're most likely going after really, really big fish, the multi-billion dollar types of frauds. You've got people online, they may have scored a few million dollars. To us, 10 million, 20 million dollars is a lot of money, but it's not the same as billions of dollars. And once again, there's a difference between street level uh, law enforcement and federal level law enforcement street level the second they hear a claim that there is a crime going on the cops come right the cops come investigate try to stop a crime while it's actually happening but when it comes to the feds and especially the sec listen they come after everything is done they come when people are claiming that they're victims of millions and millions of dollars worth of a scam They will investigate, they will watch, they will observe someone commit the fraud over and over again for months and maybe even sometimes for years. Then when they know they have a 100% slam dunk case to take the court, that I mean, yeah, to take the court, that's when they're gonna come in and they're gonna lower the hammer. But in the meantime, between when they started the investigation and when they ended, there could be hundreds of victims who lost their life savings. That's the difference. And if you're depending on the federal government to step in and stop fraud, you're going to lose that case. The federal government comes in after the fraud has been committed and they try to put the bad guys away. But that's only if it's big enough to really move them. Otherwise, they got to put their resources to bigger stuff. What do you think, Eli? So I have a different opinion. I do agree with what you're saying from that aspect, but I also want to put on my conspiracy hat here, right? <laughs> Go ahead. Because, you know, you always hear these brothers call me, myself, you, 
and Tony Cointel Pro. They call us agents that we're that we're trying to destroy black liberation. But yet, when you look at a lot of these brothers and you look at their backgrounds, whether it's a polite, a Umar, a Tariq Nasheed, a Caesar, all of them have very questionable backgrounds. They all use an alias. No one really knows where they came from. Could it just be that if I wanted to keep a group of people confused, keep them stuck, that I would continuously promote ineffective leadership that keeps you stuck, if not just sets you back? I believe it was J. Edgar Hoover who spoke about that the media and the government would shape your Messiah, that there would never be another Malcolm or Martin, that they would create your leaders for you. And see, when you see so many of these brothers and sisters come, they all have the same background, the quote unquote street guy or gal that was slinging dope off the iPhone. And then they just went to jail and they learned so much about real estate or black empowerment. And then all of a sudden now they just pop up out of nowhere and they're everywhere being promoted to you. Could it just be that those people that they say that we are, that maybe they are? Or maybe they're being promoted by these agencies and you don't even know it. And they don't even know it because they're just useful idiots. Because I see the same MO time and time again. And it's just so repetitive over and over and over again. You go to jail. You tell me you want money for a real estate property or a real estate fund or a school. And then here we are five years later, seven years later, 10 years later. And it's the same rhetoric over and over and over again. I want to help my people. I want to help my people. I want to teach them real estate. I want to do a museum. I want to do a school. And here we are now, years upon years later, and we're still in the same rut that we've been in, if not worse. Because when you look at the fact, like JT always talks about, we've had so much available cash that we mm. never had before in one of the greatest bubbles of all time. And all we did was give it to scammers, go buy jewelry, buy a bunch of cars on Toro, run a bunch of Airbnb plays, and go to a bunch of conferences. And now most of you are either scammed or broke. So if I wanted to keep you stuck, I would give you people that would keep you stuck. Now, I mean, that, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good point. I mean, at some point, you have to ask the question, is it an accident or is it on purpose? Because an accident can only happen so many times before you ask the question, I think it's intentional. It's a good point. It's a good point. But also, we got to take a little responsibility to learn from our mistakes. I'm not saying that we should victim blame. Not at all. Because a lot of these scammers, they know exactly what they're doing. They know how to do it. They're on it. But we as a culture, we have to create some kind of backlash when it comes to scamming. We like the bad guy in the movie. We want to see the bad guy get over at times in the movie when he's fighting against the system. These scammers are affecting us, right? These scammers, all of these finesse people. When you have a person like Bam Man Kevo, who is teaching scammer culture, and you support it because you're like, oh, he's going to teach me something to get over. <laughs> but who are you really getting over on? That's the question. And if you want to continue to support that type of mindset, scam a culture, you're going to keep getting the same result that we've been getting because it's it's it, it gets frustrating. It, it absolutely gets frustrating. All right, let me get through these last calls and we're going to wrap it up. No more new calls. I'm looking at who's up here. No more new calls. If you're on here, I'm going to do my best to get you on. I got EJ. EJ, you are live on the air. With pocket watching with JT, what's going on? Hey, what's good, JT? Um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. All right. Hey, oh, I want to say, uh, hey, uh, what's up, Eli? And um, uh, shout out to Tony. Um, hey, by the way, my question is this, right? Um, uh, I know you saw uh the video that Tony posted on Twitter. You know, Caesar bailed out, and you know he over uh, got a recording and tapping his head like on I got the ankle the video model. right here. I'll play it. Mm -hmm. Keep talking. But think okay, this is my question, right? What do you think is gonna happen to him next after that? Like, you think he's gonna get like some like deal or some shit? Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to cuss on your platform because I don't want to. No, 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 you, you good. I, and I, I'm about to play, I'm gonna play the video real quick so people can see what uh what you talk about. So give me one second while we bring it up. 
So, so this, this is a new video of, I, I'm assuming, of Caesar after he got himself, you know, bailed out. I think it was a million dollar bond. And this is what he's trying to communicate to, to the people. This right here. Yeah. And I know you know the song he playing in the background. <laughs> We're not going anywhere. That's DMX. That's crazy. Like he's a he clown, just fuck- man. The guy, mm. the guy, the guy's a clown. He's really playing with his victims. And it, honestly, I think stuff like that, that makes me think he's currently not in a situation where he's he's working out a deal with the government because that will come back on him. Because I feel like a lot of the victims, they're going to point at this, the attorneys for the victims, the attorneys for the state, they're going to look. He got an opportunity to get out. And now it's like he is basically just throwing it in the face of his victims that he's, you know, not going anywhere. He's not going to face justice for what he did. And once again, the feds do not come at you like this if they don't have you, right? If they don't have enough evidence where they feel like it's a slam dunk dunk case, they're going to wait until they get enough evidence. This tells me they have enough evidence. I think that he's not corroborating by doing something like this. Maybe DJ Envy is the one who's corroborating and he thinks that DJ Envy is his friend and he's going to stay with him or something. But trust me, the person who snitches first gets the best deal. And DJ Envy, to me, based on what I see, he's absolutely racing to snitch. He's absolutely (laughs) willing to be the first one to tell. He's not holding on to any type of street code or any of that. He's going to sing. He's going to be R. Kelly. He's going to be Luther. He's going to be whoever he needs to be to keep from actually having to go to jail for a long, long time. Also, too, what I want to what I want to add yeah. to that is I, I spoke about when when Jen had on like the Chanel sweater and stuff or even like when they were like trying to clap back at me and Tony and like go back and forth. It just it, it shows a lack of empathy. It shows a lack of sympathy for the investors. Like, I want you guys to understand there's a human element to this. The people who got burned, they took out second mortgages on their home. Mm-hmm. They have to make those payments every single day month some of those individuals took out money they put aside for their kids college tuition that are currently going to school and they have to take out loans for the kids to go to school some of these people were victims of jeffrey epstein got abused sexually by a man and then won a settlement and then invested that money allegedly with caesar and then got effed over again Again, just i want you there are real humans that are suffering behind this that can't pay their rent there's a brother from jersey tony was just interviewing uh, uh, you know, speaking to the father the brother passed away he allegedly invested three four hundred thousand dollars with caesar he died the father then go went to go try to get the money back because the man who died has a family and caesar didn't give back the money allegedly see th- these things impact real people on a daily basis there are real people that are suffering, humans. So yeah, I know it's all this allegedly and maybe and this and that, but think about the people. So when you post something like that, it just goes to show that you're not even thinking about the people that are impacted. And like JT said, when those people, when the Fed see that, that you lack empathy and sympathy and that you're on here taunting people and trying to dox and expose and slandering and lying, or oh, they're going to throw the book at you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's 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 one of the dumbest things that a person can do in his position. But once again, if you look at those bank statements like I saw, the actual bank statement for the business that was accepting investors' money, allegedly, and you look and you see someone go to Taco Bell, right? They door dash Taco Bell three times in one day. Obviously, you're not dealing with the brightest person in the world that type of behavior is somewhat almost expected at this point. All right, let me bring up Mel. Mel, you are live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Hey, JT. Yes, go right ahead, Mel. Oh, my gosh, I can't run out of nowhere. First of all, I want to say, I just want to get y'all flowers because I told my husband, JT, the truth. <laughs> Even when you put Dr. Sabi out there, my sister turned me on to you. I was like, no, not Dr. Sabi. 
I saw him. He ever do a show with you mm. with a, a blue tail stripper riding on an elephant? It's over. Because I know he did his research and he ain't playing. But um, I thank y'all for bringing up the DJ everything. Okay, don't laugh, don't laugh, don't laugh. He's sleep. Mm. But um, the DJ everything. I really thought at first, just shallow. I didn't mm. dwell into it too, too deep. Right. But the DJ Envy thing, I kind of saw him as like, oh, he a little soft guy. He ain't do nothing. Mm -hmm. But man, that last episode. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a matter of time. And that's all I wanted to say. Hey, thank you so much for coming up. I appreciate it. A lot of this stuff when it comes to fraud and scams. And listen, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been a financial advisor for a long time. A lot of it comes through time. You dip your toe in the scamming for the most part. Some people, they jump in the deep end early, but other people, they just dip their toe in scamming and then it gets somewhat comfortable. And then the more money they get and the more time that goes by, you see them behave more wild, right? Earlier in, within a scam, it may be conservative, but the longer it goes on without them being spotted, without them being caught, all of a sudden now their behavior gets flagrant. Their behavior gets so wild and crazy to the point where they're going to crash. And, you know, we, we see a lot of that behavior here. Uh, we got Dr. Anderson in the building. Let me bring up the doc. What's going on? You live on air. There's only one Dr. Anderson. Can you hear me? I'm not sure if you're on mute or what's going on. I'm going to bring you down. I'm going to let you work on it. Let me bring up Omar. Omar, you are live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Hey, how are you guys doing? Good, man. Thanks for calling. Yeah, so I, I kind of wanted to, the um, only reason why I called was because um, I see a lot of people saying that um, Eli, sorry, uh, Envy didn't know. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of people have to realize the reason why um, when, they, when they caught uh, – when they caught um, Bernie Madoff scheme, what happened was the original investors, and his name was uh, Pickhour, something like that. Um, he was an investor, extremely smart investor. And he knew, uh, and Bernie Madoff said this himself, that he knew that he was basically scamming people and the returns were absolutely ridiculous. Um, right. But since he already originally invested with him, he wanted to get his money back. On top of that, receiving not only his money back, but receiving any profits he could receive. And Bernie Madoff knew he had to pay him because of how high of a, you know, a status this individual was. Because again, he was a, he was a he was investing billions of dollars. I mean, obviously DJ Envy didn't invest billions, but he invested apparently five hundred thousand dollars and whoever knows what else. Um, he D, DJ Envy completely took advantage of this person um, of uh, of him. Um, and knew, I 100% he knew that he was scamming people. Like, there's no way around that, right? But he knew that if he continued to promote it, not only would he receive his returns back, that apparently he was missing $500,000, but he would receive additional, you know, income on top of that. Um, I wanted to say that and then also... Paul's right there. Paul's right there. I think you made a good point. Let me try to clear a couple of things up based on what I remember on the Bernie Madoff story. Okay, real quick. So... I remember that particular situation. That investor with Bernie Madoff, big uh, deep pocket investor, he was used by Bernie Madoff to bail him out when other people needed to get uh, exit the investment. So let's say there would be five or six people who needed their money back. Well, Bernie Madoff, it was a Ponzi scheme. He never really had enough money to pay everyone back. He would rely, Bernie, would rely to be able to go to that big investor and say, hey, I need you to give me some money so I can pay off some people who are trying to get out of the investment. That guy would only do it long enough so that Bernie would be able to pay off the old investor, let Bernie get some new investors, then immediately that guy would pull his money back plus whatever income that he made off the money. So it was a symbiotic relationship that Bernie Madoff had between him and that top investor 
and most uh, law enforcement, you know, people behind the scenes, they believe 100% that guy knew it was a Ponzi scheme. He took out way more money than he put into it, but it was because he knew what was going on. And Bernie could not cross this guy because Bernie always had to go back to him to get funds when people needed to exit. And if you're trying to put DJ Envy in that position, DJ Envy will go to jail for an extremely long time if DJ Envy played the same role with Caesar as that guy did with Bernie. In, in, any last words? Yeah, and, I, and I, I believe he, I don't believe he was doing it as far as, you know, doing it to, I guess, help him. I think it was more or less him trying to get his returns back. Oh, yeah. Uh, because it was, he know he lost. Like, I don't think it was like yeah. what that. What the hell? He was just trying to get his money back. Exactly. Yeah. Trying to get his money back. And he knew that was a that would be an easier way to do it because of the fact that he had to know that this guy wasn't actually going out and purchasing properties. Um, but I also yeah. wanted to say one one small thing about, um, you know, the other platforms not talking about this. Um, like, I am a like a EYL supporter. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I watch Market Mondays every Monday. And... Mm -hmm. They they were able to bring up the Israel and Gaza situation, but they couldn't talk about this. Like it makes absolutely no sense. None. They can correlate that with finance. However, they cannot correlate this. People that's been on, people that's been on their platform. All right, I'm done. Thank you. Great. Also, Listen, I want I want to point. add to that because great I think point. that this is very very important. This is why it is important for the legal. The, the, the actual government authorities get involved and the agencies that get involved to find out what did Envy know and when did he know it? Because based upon my surface level research, we know for a fact he did know a lot. He knew more than what he's claiming he knows now. So now we need to find out, was he getting paid? How much was he getting paid? Did he know that he was getting paid at the expense of other people? Because think about this for a second. If you purchased a school and you were supposed to renovate and fix the school, per what he said when he responded about he never received his dividends, how can you get dividends on a school that's not open? <laughs> so where would it do? Think about this for a second, right? When he, right, when he was, right. Right. When, when he was supposed to be getting dividends, how could you get dividends for a school that's not open? That needs to be renovated. So that one is on, just on from face value didn't make any sense because where would the dividends be coming from? Unless you knew that the dividends are coming from other people. Hold right there. I, I, I want to make sure people understand what we're talking about here. In the live that uh, DJ Envy did with Tony the Closer, it's on YouTube. It's also on his Instagram. When Tony confronts DJ Envy and he asks uh, DJ Envy, how has your business dealings gone with uh, Caesar? He kind of waffles a little bit. He says some has been good and some has been bad. Then uh, Tony, the closer, he presses him again. He said, does he owe you money, DJ MV? And he's like, okay, you're going to let me talk? And then eventually he finally says, yes, he, he, owe, he, he says, no, he doesn't owe me money. We partnered up on a deal. And he said, you know, I gave him $500,000 on the deal. And he said, I haven't got my money back or I, asked, I want my money back. You can't say I want my money back to Eli's point. You can't just all of a sudden say, I want my money back. That's not how the deal works. He can't simply look. He's got to sell the uh, apartment complex. Or it was a school that he was trying to convert into a, a, an apartment complex. You can't just say, I want my money back unless maybe... You know, this is all theory, unless maybe DJ Envy was steering some people to invest with uh, Caesar and steering <laughs> some people who he was close with not to invest with Caesar. And that's how he was going to get his money back by bringing in new investors in the project so he can then exit the project. Because if, the, if he knew very well the, that that school has not been renovated. He knew very well that there was no exit position for that property anytime soon, but he was expecting to get his money back soon. Maybe that would come from the new investors bailing him out because he's promoting a guy, but at the same time, allegedly, his close friends, like I think uh, Tony the Closer said that that um, Ami, uh, Omi and the Hellcat, he mm -hmm. was steered away 
from the investment <laughs> while the open public was steered to the investment. Seems a little weird. Seems that, a little weird. But at that point, then you're engaging in fraud. You're orchestrating yeah. who will get defrauded and who will not. But see, yeah. this when I see people defending envy, it just really shows me how immature we are as a culture when it comes to business, when it comes to finance and understanding ethics in business, that when a person is comparing legitimate business, legal business to the streets, that should tell you that they have the intentions of fraud because <laughs> they're comparing something legal to something illegal, right? And it just it, it's amazing to me how so many of us miss something that's just so obvious. If a person is equating a legitimate investment opportunity to in the streets and flipping drugs, that should be the biggest red flag for you not to give them a dime of your money. Every time. <laughs> right? I Every, mean, that, it's, it's screaming. Don't, don't give them your money. They're comparing business to illegal activity, which means they're criminal minded. And that leads you that, that leads you to jail every single time. All right, I've got I got Naps TV. Naps TV, you coming up here. Let me bring you up here. Give me one second. Here we go. Can Naps TV, okay? live on the air. What's going yeah. on, bro? Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, I, I'll try to make this brief. Mm. Some um, you know, and, and I'm sure Eli has said what's up to him too. I'm sure you've seen, Peace. you know, you spoke, you've spoken about Umar. Well, Umar has been on there on the breakfast call about six times. I'm getting to a point. Mm -hmm. The last time he was on there, right? And they said, oh, why hasn't the school come up? Umar started blaming black contractors. And MB is sitting there saying, yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying. They're all scammers, blah, blah, blah. And the thing is, wait a minute. You had to, he, he used this same excuse two years prior when he was on the show and you didn't even give a follow-up question, right? He's been on there for five, he's been on there six times. And you uh, couldn't even say, well, wait a minute, brother, hold on. Um, yeah, you used that excuse last time. And the point I'm making is, it's not about the perpetrators anymore. If you still mm -hmm. think that that bomb shelter is gonna materialize into some school, that's your business. Now, if you think a hookah lounge in LA is gonna bring you closer to reparations or some false hip hop, doc, that's your business. You understand? If you believe these things, you understand these are grown-ups. We're not talking about little kids here. These are grown-ups at the end of the day. It is now, you guys do a good job in that you're focusing on the platforms that keep on pushing this stuff. That was right. insulting what, what this guy did. You, The Breakfast Club has been around for, what, damn near 20 years? You mm -hmm. need clout from Umar? You couldn't, so what? If he called you a coon, so what? Just... Be a be a real, but but you just have them on there for clicks and views. You don't right. care if you miseducate them, and then and 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 um and you don't even act like a professional. That's why I love what what's happening to MB. I do not care if they stick him underneath the jail. His name is mud now. It's <laughs> mud at, at this stage in the game. It's about it's not about these perpetrators. I mean. You're either you're either smart. Stop listening to people saying, oh, black people use your third eye. Some of us are idiots. Some <laughs> of us are idiots. All right. Under now it's about focusing on the platforms. All right. That that keep promoting these people. And that if you're going to if you're going to bring them on your platform, ask them some real questions. Look, I don't agree with everything that Lord Jamar does, but what he did. When he had Umar and kept pressing him, great asked job. Him, yeah, just be be a reporter. I mean, and he has his own sacred cows too. I get that, but do mm -hmm. that, all right. Don't care if you're if you're if you're calling uh, uh, you know names and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. understand when people say that you guys do this for clout, you you get slandered for doing this. And oh. when it's all over, even if the person gets caught. Then you're still, you still, you know, you're still muddy. Tony, the closer yeah, guy. Like, it's like, yeah, even, even if you get the person, even if yeah. someone that me, Eli, Tony, something that we cover, when it's exposed, it's a scam. There's a few people who say, you know what, guys, I'm sorry. 
I was cussing y'all out. I was all in your comments, slandering you. I'm sorry. Oh. That's a small percentage. Most people, they'll just move on and say, well, what about this person? This person over here, you did a video on and they haven't been caught yet. So it's 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 a losing game. I want to make sure I emphasize this. I do this for fun. I'm yeah. extremely petty. Right, I make my money off the fact that I am an actual certified financial planner. I have a firm and a practice where I make money. If I depended on this to make money, I would be stopping the show halfway through and say, this episode of Pocket Watching with JT has been brought to you by so-and-so. I would have to pimp myself out like that if that was the, if this was about trying to really make a lot of money on YouTube. The platform has grown so far just based on the fact that a lot of the stuff that I say, that Eli say, that Tony says, has actually shown and proved to be real. And people appreciate that. And, you know, the platform's grown. But, yeah, it, it, it'll be ridiculous if we, you know, was was I'm, waiting I'm, on the community to be like, yeah, we hate scammers. Because to be honest, we have a pro-scammer culture. Until we get over that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough. Yeah. Just lastly, listen, you're lucky if you get cursed out. I mean, they will dig in your family. They'll approach every, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll try to ruin your life, your <laughs> life. All right. So again, like shout out to you guys and even a special shout out Morris World TV, Lennon on of what he did. I don't, yep. I mean, yep. all, all those people, cause they were all, you were all right. And, and about these guys who come up, like I saw 19, I, you know, just another one. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, moving up something else, but I checked out his Instagram and stuff. I don't know much about him except the, and dude is in a jail suit. In other words, they're pushing this message. Look at where he came from. And it's really, they're, they're trying to appeal to you because most of us had grown up in the church, right? Mm. Look at where God brought you from, blah, blah, blah. Forgetting that. Wait a minute. What? You should look at that and say, wait a minute. What did he do to get there in the first place? <laughs> You understand how, wait, like, I mean, I'm not against people having second chances, but what happens is you get these guys, they're legitimized, and then you elevate them to the top, to the front of the room. It's, right. it's crazy, In front bro. of all the other qualified people who do not have a history of fraud and criminal activity. I'm a big because, believer in second chances. Mm -hmm. I would not right. want to live in a country or a society that did not give people a second chance. I'm going to give you a second chance in life. I will never give you a second chance to scam me. That's the difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just thanks for having me up and listen, I, and I'm just going to, no offense to you. The reason why is because they think you guys are corny, man. They, that, that's <laughs> it. They, and they like, no, it's, it's not a diss. No, I know. That's, that's, no, basically, no. that's basically what it is. And this is why these guys come with the swag and, you know, the, and it's it's hard. It's just it, it's ridiculous, man. So keep doing what you're doing, and everybody else who's a whistleblower out there, man. And um, you know, I, I just look for. I'm and again, I hope Danby, if if he's let off in handcuffs, I will not feel sorry, bro. And thanks no, again. No. And I want right, to add to this real quick. But y'all go I'm check out Naps for. TV. Let me bring up Eli. Y'all go Naps TV. He's a, a YouTuber, content creator. Y'all go check out Naps TV. I want to add to this, right? Because I think that this is important because I see some people saying, well, Umar didn't scam anyone. Let me explain something to you. I said ineffective leadership. If you are taking money for an operation that you know you don't have the skill set to complete, that is a scam. You don't have the resources to complete. That is a scam. See, at, beyond the rhetoric, See, a lot of you, you like people who you say they solid because they can run their mouth. Outside of running their mouth, what can they actually do, actually accomplish? When they run their mouth and they say they want money for something, can they actually deliver on the things that they say that they want? Because, see, we are a wealthless group of people. We don't have 13, 14, 8 million, 10 million, 15 million dollars just to give away. Because nope. you have some rhetoric. That money could have better been in your pocket, given to your family, invested somewhere else. So understand, when I'm speaking, a lot of you don't understand. That is a scam. To take money for a project where you don't have the expertise, the resources, or the team to complete the job, yet you are still raising funds 
and you're not out here getting the help that you need, that is a scam. So I get it. You may feel good because the person can say some things and tap into his root chakra for you. But beyond that, when you get into the five sense reality, what are these people actually accomplishing that is making and moving the needle forward? What? Outside of lectures. Great. We've been having lectures since the 80s. Great. Ugh. They wrote another book. Way to go. Great. Another lecture. Great. They on a YouTube live. Outside of that, what infrastructure are they building? What political movements are they building? What tangible results are they generating for the culture? For the they had a convention, Eli. Eli, you can't forget about the convention. They had, they had a festival, though, man. You, 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 you can't negate a festival. Right? It, it, just, it, it gets to the point where, again, I'm not knocking anyone's hustle. I'm speaking to those of you who are falling for the hustle. Listen, get your money how you see fit. I'm a capitalist. Make your money how you see fit. I'm speaking to those of you who keep falling for the pro-black, the pro-Spanish scheme and scam. At a certain point, we have to just understand when I'm conducting business, I want to do business. I don't care about how well you speak. I don't care about how many times you've been to jail, what gang you've been in, you know, what ancestors you know. I just care about the business. Simple. All right, all right. We got two more callers, and we're going to wrap this thing up. We got JD. JD, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? JD going once. I see you. I can see you, but you. <laughs> hey, JT, can you hear me? Yeah, go right ahead. All right, blessings and thanks to you, Eli and Tony, and all the hardworking people on earth. Uh, I'm JD, which stands... Uh, uh, I'm JD from Shit Talk uh, with an eight between the I and the T. <laughs> uh, my name is John Doe because I don't want fame. I just want money. I'm no uh, leader. I'm just a YouTuber. Uh, I mm -hmm. had two points to make if you let me. Go right in. All right. Uh, my first point is I want to remind everybody that uh, we're the ones making the money. Uh, they aren't making the money. <laughs> so anytime they try to get you with that, uh, uh, look at my Lambo, look at my cars, look at all that, remind them that it's from you, not, they didn't do it all. They didn't do anything. They just trying to get the money from you, all right? We, uh, we're we the kings of our finances. We shouldn't be the slaves to it. Uh, so I'm reading off a script right now. I can't put my thoughts together. So <laughs> uh, the second point, I'm tired of all these old scams being recycled uh, in the black community as if it never happened in the first place. But what's next? NFTs for the culture? That's all I got. <laughs> all right, JD, man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, I got Dr. Anderson. Hopefully, you got your mic working. Let me bring up Dr. Dr. Anderson. You're live on there. What's going on? You're live on there. What's going on? Hey, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. You can hear me okay now? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So, uh, first of all, JT, I think I've followed you guys for a very long time. And um, I think you are doing um, uh, black people a very good service by this show. However, mm -hmm. there is something, there's an elephant in the room that you're kind of glossing over. Okay. And that elephant in the room is the power of celebrity in our community. In particular, how celebrity is peddled to get black people to do a ton of things that are not good for us. And I believe mm -hmm. Eli was speaking to this earlier when he said that essentially uh, Caesar was peddling or using uh, um, uh, DJ's envy celebrity is what made the whole thing pop. Yeah. Well, something yeah. you do on this show that doesn't happen many other places, JT, you pump, you punch up. Most people punch down. That's very important because most of us are not willing to hold people accountable who are on a stage. Who are on a stage. So the celebrity often gets a pass. We see this happening right now, uh, the show you did on Robert Smith. 
absolutely mm-hmm. spectacular. Oh, but yet you. he has a certain stature in our community simply because he's the wealthiest black man in America. What people can't see is that you and I could be that way if, if a white man gave us a billion dollars as well. And everything that went into making that happen uh, was very fraudulent. But a lot of us give that a pass because he's on a stage. Now, I just want to add this one little thing. Mm-hmm. William O'Neill was able to bring down Chairman Fred Hampton because he was an FBI informant who had who the feds had him by the balls for years. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm I'm speaking to you as an attorney and as a preacher. Accept the hard work that often the criminal justice system has already done for you. There's a reason why this society marks people with scarlet letters. We do it by way of pedophiles with the sex registry, and we do it by way of felonies, marking people with felonies. When you see a person like DJ Envy or a person like, I hate to say this, I'm not trying to take a shot, but Dr. Boyce Watkins, people who have a certain level of celebrity but somehow are paired with someone who is not on that up and up or who is a convicted Mm -hmm. felon, that needs to be something that raises your antenna. JT, now I don't know nothing about, I know you're a certified financial planner. You got some convicted felons on the payroll? You got some some convicted felons? You're you're making such a great point. Now now people are going to call us elitists. They're going to say that we are... uh, leaving our community and going off and getting degrees and, and we're not coming back and we're, and we're playing bougie, but that's a reality. You know, you're not going to associate yourself with, with criminals and felons because that type of behavior can reflect on you. And if you have a lot of people who are extremely comfortable dealing with ex con and felons and people with who still engage in street culture, you are lending yourself to be in the position where envy is right now. Let's say envy, let's say DJ Envy is a victim. I personally do not believe he's a victim based on all the information that I have before me. But let's just put that to the side for one moment. Let's say DJ Envy is a victim. If he is a victim, he's a victim of his own neglect, of his own ignorance of his own ego because he partnered up with a man who went to jail for fraud. He even made a statement and I showed it in an earlier video. He made a statement that when he first partnered with Caesar, people who were close to him told him not to do it. People who were close to him said, do not partner with that man. That man has a shady past. That man has a criminal past. If you partner with him, he is going to either rub off on you and drag you down. Once again, I do not believe DJ Envy is a victim. But if he was a victim, that's why he would be a victim of his own ego. The fact that he wanted to he, probably his greed and he, he ignored the fact that he was partnering up with someone with a shady background. And now, because he was giving someone a second chance or whatever, he may go to jail for a long time. JT, that is spot on. That is a wonderful analysis. We are judged by the company that we keep. Giving people second chances does not mean putting people right back in the exact same situation um, where they can defraud us. We need to pay attention to these type of things. I know you, as a as a certified financial planner, me as an attorney, I can. If there are certain things I cannot even be around. Yep. Just the I have to in the law we call it. I don't know about in your canon of ethics, but as a lawyer, there is something called fleeing the appearance of impropriety. The appearance, the mere appearance, because Mm -hmm. the bar says where there is smoke, 
there is fire where there is smoke and there's fire. And we are platforming. Eli said something a minute ago. We are platforming people in our community who we should not be doing. We should not be doing that. Yeah. And we are excommunicating the people who we should be accepting. <laughs> and that that's and I, I'll just I, I will I will leave it at that. But I think I think what needs to come out of this is that mm. people need to pay very close attention to the people you're associated. Something you need to know about JT as a certified financial planner. They put him through the ringer to get that certification. Yep. They put him through the ringer. Not every you are meeting a very rare person in JT with as a black man with that credential. So when you meet people who don't have those credentials or who have not been put, I'm not trying to sign elitists, but hell, Michael Jordan is an elite basketball player because he's the best at what he did. Serena Williams is an elite. Ten. There's nothing wrong with elitism. What is wrong with is when we think when we use elitism as arrogance. That's a totally different thing. But I'll right. leave it at that. And JT, you guys keep up the great work and I'll keep tuning in. Absolutely, my brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and, and you, you make a great point. You make a great point. I, I'm in a position where I am always, always held to the standard of a fiduciary at all times. I can never allow a situation to look as if there's a conflict of interest, meaning I can never give advice that will mm -hmm. benefit me over the person who I'm giving advice to. If I'm ever in a position where I am taking mm -hmm. some sort of kickback from someone to recommend something or anything that's crazy like that, I'm subjecting mm -hmm. myself to lose my livelihood, something that I worked extremely hard for. So will I pal around with people who I know are ex-cons, people who were convicted of fraud and I play around with that? Absolutely not, because I can lose everything I worked so hard for. Speaking Eli, of that, JT, I'm sharing a video right now, right? I mm -hmm. want you to look at this video. The I video know. that I'm about to play, this is Caesar's brother, Lucci. So when we're speaking about having the platform that DJ MV has, you have to, like the caller just said, you have to ask yourself a question. Why would someone that's interviewing presidential candidates that's talking to tier one, top one, A-list celebrities on a daily basis. Why would he want to go into business with someone like a Cesar Pena and the brother Lewis? Now look at this video. And I want you guys in the chat to tell me, what does this video look like? Does this look like a person you'd want to do business with? Listen, it's going down December 9th. Come check us out with my big bro, Flippin' NJ and DJ MB. This is going to be our second seminar. Now it's my turn to speak. I'm going to teach you how I became the best property manager in New Jersey. See this money you see here? This is all late fee money. From the first to the fifth, I'm already collecting 1,100 tenants. 1,100 envelopes. Look, and now today's the sixth. Forget about the fifth, the first, the third. That's all done with. Look at this. This is all late fee money. Y'all niggas be talking shit out in the strip club with food that's what I could afford it. And I keep investing my money, keep going, flipping, flipping, nonstop. All of this shit you see right here is late fee money. So get your money right and invest. It's the best thing I can tell you. See y'all December 9th. Just think about that for a second. <laughs> now, I get it. I'm a sidewalk guy. I'm not the realest street nigga running the street, busting my gun. But I know drug trafficking when I see it. <laughs> and, you know, I've been a landlord before. Right. And my tenants never paid me in stacks of cash wrapped in rubber bands. <laughs> Only time I see people with stacks of cash in rubber bands, drugs. Right. <laughs> so, you know, one would have to ask themselves if I'm DJ Envy and I have one of the largest media platforms in the world, why would I want to be around that if I didn't relate to that in some type of way? See, mm -hmm. we have to be very mindful when we start putting the pieces of the puzzle together. You know, because last time I checked, I, I thought you had to wait till like after the fifth to collect late fee money. How could he already be collecting late fee money and it's just the fifth? But, you know, <laughs> what do I know? Right, right, right. I, I thought that that time had to pass before you could start collecting the late fee money. But, you know, 
I, you know, I digress. Nothing about this stuff made sense. No. And see, if you if you just simply did one plus one, you would look at that and say that does not equate to two. That equates to mm-hmm. drugs, illegal activity. They knew they knew who they were trying to attract, mm-hmm. right? Does it, that attracts a certain type of clientele? It attracts a clientele that either is one uh, that their financial literacy is low. Even though, as a financial advisor, I can tell you most people's financial literacy is low. All right, most people. I don't care if you have a four year degree or you straight out of high school. Most people's financial literacy is low, but that appeals to people who like drug culture. They like the dark side of hip hop culture. They are. Mm-hmm. of the mindset of flipping money, not investing money, but flipping money. I give you $200. It's going to come back around $500 or $600, stuff like that. And when you have that type of appeal, most <laughs> likely you're dealing with someone who's looking to scam you. That is not how real business is done. I'm sorry. I am lame. I am corny. I'm, I'm like that old song by, by, uh, Huey Lewis, right, where he says, it's hip to be a square. I can tell you right now, it's real hip to be a square. When you're a square, I've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in investments. When you're a square, I can pay every bill that pops up. When you're a square, I'm not looking over my shoulder because I did someone dirty or I'm in the streets. When you're a square, you have retirement money and assets. So I'll be a square all day. But you guys, the people who are under the sound of my voice, listen, there are many qualified accountants, lawyers, and advisors who look like you. I know a lot of you, you appeal, right, and are attracted to these fake gurus because you believe they're like you. They come from your community. You go to them because if you go to someone outside of your community, you go to a lawyer, an accountant or an advisor to someone outside of your community, you're afraid that they're going to judge you. You're afraid that they're going to look down on you. So you'd rather go to someone who you feel like you have some sort of relationship with. I got it. But you don't have to go to these unqualified, uneducated, scamming Negroes. There are, <laughs> there are associations of Black lawyers. There are associations of Black advisors, Black accountants. You can go to many, many, many qualified professionals that will help you. They will keep you from doing the wrong things and being scammed. Yeah, you're going to pay a fee, but most of you are paying these fake gurus way more money than it would cost for a consultation with a lawyer, an accountant, or an advisor. You guys are paying thousands and thousands of dollars for masterminds with people who were in jail five or 10 years ago when you can pay a couple hundred dollars with a consultation from an actual qualified professional. And JT, Eli, any, any last words, Eli? Think about this for a second, right? You and I are supposedly, we are squares. Right. Yeah, we can look at that and see for what it is. Yet DJ Envy wants us to believe that he was partnering with these individuals. He was full. Right, he was full. He didn't, he didn't know anything, right? He partnered with a group of guys called trap lords, trap landlords, right? right? That are flashing wads of cash and Patterson jersey. He didn't know anything. He was just a victim. He's a victim. <laughs> they had on chains like they were death row records. Like 1990s death row records. Jewel. They have on 5X t-shirts and Jordans in the middle 40s. Yeah, they didn't. DJ Envy had no idea that these guys would do something like this. I mean, you know, I mean, they look the part of a criminal. They have a criminal background and they're engaging and behaving like criminals. Yet DJ Envy didn't know anything. You know, at a certain point, I, I, I get it, man. We don't want to believe that there are people out here that are monsters. But the reality is, that as you get around many of these celebrities and these entertainers, they are not the image that they portray on the radio or on the television. Many of these people are wicked people and they're corrupted by power. So what I would say in closing, you can believe what you want to believe. You can invest in what you want to invest. 
I feel good knowing that so many people message me saying, man, I watched a video about so-and-so and I was just about to invest my money with that person, but I saw your video and I didn't. That's why I do this. I feel good about protecting people from losing it all. And also to younger people who may see this foolishness and want to follow that path and or even follow these individuals and buy into their schemes. Because many of us, we don't have a lot of resources. So we have a lot of aspiration. And when you see people who look like you and they have this story of making it from the Bronx or from Jersey or whatever the case may be, you want to believe in that because you may currently be living in that. There is nothing that will ever supersede work. If you want success, you have to put in the work. This idea that, you know, this whole I'm just going to flip or I'm going to buy a course and all that. You have to do work. You have to educate yourself and be willing to do the work. There's no shortcuts to success. Many of these people who you think are successful at real estate who you think are successful DJs or celebrities. Many of these people are engaging in fraud and all type of illegal activities. And now we're starting to see all of these things unravel like I predicted it would two years ago. And everyone called me crazy. They said I was a hater. They said I was a clout chaser. And like I said, the big business. And like I said, to Caesar, you can make up all the lies you want about me. The truth is going to come out about you. And I'll still be here six months from now a year from now, two years from now, but you won't. And going forward, like I said before, if a person tells you that they're a criminal, if they if they constantly keep referencing, referencing the streets and street culture, and they talk about how much of a real one they are, do not be surprised when they treat you like a nigga in the streets. Because most of these people went from selling dope to black people and now they're selling hope. At a certain point, we have to start leading and looking for people that are leading with the information that can actually get us to where we want to be. Not people who are selling the dream, but people who are actually living the dream. And like JT said, go find people that are qualified. Go find people that can show you their results, show you the work, not tell you the work, not give you a bunch of excuses, but can say, this is how long I've been doing this, and these are my results. If we focus on those things, we will definitely get much further. So with that being said, thanks for JT for covering this. Shout out to Tony. Shout out to the Star Report. Shout out to Rick Ross, Funk Flex, uh, and so many other platforms. Spencer. Spencer did an amazing video. Yes. And had we not been so diligent in covering this, we would not be here today. So for those of you who say things like, why are y'all doing this? I don't make money from doing this. I lose money because the people who I do business with, they don't want to see me engaging in this going <laughs> back and forth. This takes time from what I'm good at. But I understand that karma is real and it's good to do good for people because this very well could have been me when I was younger and inexperienced. But had we not pre pressed like this, it would have never got to Sarah Wallace. It would have just right. been brushed under the rug because EYL is not going to cover it. Million dollars with the game won't cover it. The blog Shade Room Hollywood Unlocked won't cover this because we don't have real black media and journalism. Instead, we have is black propaganda. So it is important for platforms like this and Tony and myself and Star, et cetera, who cover stuff like this because you give victims a voice. This has been going on since 2017. Mm. Five and a half years this has been going on, almost six Think about how many the millions of dollars that people have lost so other people can live lavish at the expense of other people. As I said before, there is a human component to this. There are real people. Every People say, oh, the investors have to take some blame. They are taking blame. They have to live with this foolish decision every single day. They look in their bank account and it is negative $250,000. They are paying for a second mortgage on their house. Don't tell me the investors need to take accountability. They're taking accountability because they have to deal with the consequences every day. Now it's time for Envy and Caesar to deal with their consequences. Absolutely. Listen, if you guys are not currently subscribed to Eli, a link to his YouTube channel is in the description of this video. It is what happened 
to common sense. Make sure you are subscribed to Eli. Make sure you subscribe to Tony the Closer, his IG and his YouTube channel. Listen, guys, this was a pop up show. I'm still doing my show this Friday. We're going to be covering the PPP loan scam that happened in Broward County, Florida. Listen, I'm not the guy that's going to give you the get rich quick stuff. I'm going to teach you how to get out of debt, how to build a budget, how to save and invest for retirement. You may not be flashy. You may not become a millionaire overnight, but you can live comfortably and you can do it in a way where you're not a scammer. So y'all been asking for it. I'm going to give it to you. Mo Money Taxes, and I will see you this Friday. Hi, I'm Mike Evans with Mo Money. Tell me, what do you know about Mo Money? Brother, all I know is I was there last night getting my taxes done, and today, there's more money all the way. You know what I'm saying? And how about you? In here yesterday, back today to get my check. Slow money stuff is real. I'm more money for life. I had a slow money? Well, come to more money, because we about that. More money taxes, and once again, it's on, and I got the hookup. <laughs> more money taxes. Come down and see us, and you'll be glad that you did. At Mo Money Taxes, you're more than just another number. This year, we're offering our 30-second refunds to go along with our next day refunds. Come down and see us, and you'll be glad that you did. Continuing saga of Mo Money Taxes. Norfolk police are investigating the tax preparer, and they have alerted the IRS about customers' complaints. Where's my check? That's the question all of these people want answered. The IRS is basically verifying to us that their, our money is here in their bank account. Friday, crowds gathered at Mo Money Taxes in Norfolk. On Granby Street, owner Mario Brady told us he printed 50 checks and 30 did not clear. The banks have refused to cash their checks saying that there is fake. I mean, that is unacceptable. Federal agents raided the headquarters of Mo Money Taxes in Tennessee this morning. You may remember, Ted on your side, traveled to Memphis for local Mo Money customers who claimed they didn't receive their refund. We continue to follow another developing story. New tonight, tensions continue to run high as customers wait for their tax returns that they say were not getting from Mo Money Taxes. You can see the level of anger just a few hours ago at this Norfolk location off Brambleton. Angry customers who say they were promised refund checks and didn't get them broke windows and police were called to break up the angry crowd. That's just ridiculous. Marcus Eves, a former customer who says he filed his taxes with Mo Money in 2007, is worried about what we recently uncovered behind this Mo Money Tax Services location on Elvis Presley. This is wrong for, you know, files to be out here. This is people's personal information that anybody could have come by and gotten. Investigators are now looking into the discovery of thousands of documents thrown into three dumpsters behind the facility. Shortly after authorities arrived on scene and put up crime scene tape, so did Marky Granberry with Mo Money Taxes. Normally, uh, we would have all files shredded uh, and, and uh, shredded or whatever, but this we don't throw files in the garbage can. I asked him what happened and why the documents were not shredded. Our lease was up on this operation, so I assume the landlord went inside of the location and for whatever reason he decided to throw the files in a dumpster. Hey, Pocket Watchers, are you looking for real financial advice? Thornton Advisor Group is here to help. Jason Thornton, certified financial planner, specializes in tax and wealth planning. Are you living paycheck to paycheck with no retirement plan? Do you need help with the IRS? Book your consultation with Thornton Advisor Group to get a financial plan, budgeting, savings, debt management, tax planning, investing, and retirement, even IRS debt settlements. Stop trying to run the play. Get the advice you need to live your best life from a certified financial planner. Book your consultation appointment today. Go to www.thorntonadvisor.com.